I want to actually Good morning. Uh, we're here again uh, with this Facebook li uh, Live straight from the operating room, specifically a Da Vinci robot room, as you can tell. Um, this is the surgeon console. This is where the surgeon sits, and this is where we operate the, uh, we uh, complete the surgery from far away from the patient. Uh, pretty soon we're gonna show you what it looks like, the setup of the room. Uh, how the uh, actual robot, the robotic arms uh, appear, and, and it's not that scary, it's actually kind of cool. Um, we're going to uh, go through a few slides, and I want to talk about what is uh, Da Vinci robotic surgery. I'm going to talk about what procedures we do regularly with the Da Vinci robot, um, and we'll have uh, a bunch of uh, questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them during the uh, session. While I'm here, I'll be very happy to uh, answer whatever questions you may have. So let's start. I'm going to move here so you can actually uh, have a good view of the room, including the actual robotic system. This is the actual uh, uh, robot that's controlled from that surgeon's console in the corner, which I showed you a minute ago. And as you can tell, there are four arms that are completely mobile, completely articulating, can do pretty much anything we want to do. And to these arms, we are connecting instruments that are very fine instruments into each arm. And into one of these robotic arms, we put in a high-definition camera that can actually give us a perfect view inside the abdomen or the pelvis of the patient. So uh, I'm going to go straight into the uh, description of what is robotic surgery and, uh, and we'll jump into the uh, questions and then I'll maybe demonstrate a few things at the very end if we have some time free. So um, <clears throat> the title of today's um, Facebook Live is Advancements in Gynecological Surgery, The Robotic Approach. Relatively new technology, in my opinion, standard of care, if not uh, today for joint surgery, uh, it's going to be standard of care uh, pretty soon. Uh, I'm a big believer in robotic surgery. Um, I started doing this from the very first uh, days when the robot was introduced many years ago. And uh, so I am passionate about it. I do most of my cases uh, robotic uh, uh, assisted. Uh, and let's jump right into this presentation. So the objectives of this uh, uh, presentation or Facebook Live is to really review the evolution of robotic-assisted technology in gynecological surgery specifically. Um, and second uh, objective is to illustrate the increasing utility and use of robotic surgery along uh, review of clinical uh, uh, evidence and clinical information. Um, next is to review the risk factors of robotic surgery versus um, uh, open surgeries, risk versus benefits, um, and uh, we're gonna, we, we don't have enough time to cover the whole presentation, but if we do, we will talk about the various procedures that we do robotically uh, and the benefits of doing those procedures robotically versus the old-fashioned way, open or even laparoscopic. So, uh, I am uh, the director of the robotic surgery program, the female reproduct uh, reconstructive uh, surgery at uh, Pascag Valley Hospital here. 
I have an experience of about uh, just under 15 years of uh, robotic uh, surgeries. I've done uh, uh, multiple thousands of uh, complex cases utilizing pretty much every robot that was uh, ever made, including the early generations, the Da Vinci S, the SI, the XI, uh, single site robotic surgery, which maybe we'll, get, we'll have some time to, uh, to cover that as well. Um, I don't have any uh, disclosures to report here. So the advancements in uh, GYN surgeries are really moving towards less invasive surgery. And the uh, concept in mind is to perform these big complex procedures with minimal uh, uh, invasive uh, approach, uh, smaller incisions, you know, how can we uh, maximize uh, uh, efficacy and, and success of surgery, uh, quick recovery, quick return to normal activities, minimal blood loss, and so forth, and, and so on. And, you know, another uh, big one is how can we perform this big uh, GYN surgeries without uh, creating very big incisions over the abdomen or the pelvis. So for cosmetic reasons as well, although these are secondary uh, benefits. Initially, back in the day, most of these big uh, surgeries, GYN surgeries, started off being open with a very large incision, uh, either uh, a uh, horizontal incision, the bikini incision, or a vertical up and down incision. And through those big incisions, you know, women had their hysterectomies, uh, women had their myomectomies, removal of fibroids, women had removal of uh, pelvic masses, women had their endometriosis surgeries, prolapse surgeries, all through these very big incisions. And, you know, women did well, but the recovery was very long. It was a very painful uh, recovery period. It was a long recovery period. There were complications after the case because of the large incisions, whether it was the pain, uh, the bleeding, the, the infection rate following surgery. Um, but overall, you know, women did well for many years. And over time, you know, we started uh, uh, changing our approach to a more minimally invasive approach. And from there, we went to potentially doing some of these procedures vaginally uh, and completing these procedures from a vaginal approach rather than opening the abdomen. And that was, you know, one step less uh, of invasiveness. And we did uh, many hysterectomies that way, although we were kind of limited with, the, you know, what size of uterus could, we could do vaginally. Uh, the next step of this evolution was uh, moving on to laparoscopic surgery. And lap laparoscopic surgery, as you well know, is done through very small incisions on the abdomen, um, and these uh, incisions are, you know, about uh, one centimeter long each, and we typically went three or four incisions. The surgeons would, <clears throat> surgeon would be standing over the uh, patients at the uh, table side and would operate all the instruments manually by hand through these small incisions. The limitations there were these were straight sticks. There was no articulation. We could not really do a lot of complex surgery, although we did a lot of uh, hysterectomies and myomectomies laparoscopically, but we were fairly limited to uh, accessibility and, and, uh, and how complex a procedure can be done laparoscopically. And before robotic surgery, I did most of my cases laparoscopically because I did believe that women deserve um, to complete these complex surgeries in a minimally invasive approach rather than the very old uh, invasive large incisions. The next step of this evolution is, you know, we're right uh, jumping into robotic surgery. Uh, robotic assisted surgery, multiport, was the uh, first step where, once again, all the uh, procedure uh, is performed through very small little tiny incisions, just like laparoscopy, exactly the same thing. Um, and we needed about three or four incisions. Pretty soon you're going to see a slide that shows the, uh, depicts the uh, location of these incisions. Um, and instruments went in, these instruments that I'm pointing to went in the abdomen, uh, go into the abdomen, and a camera goes into one of the incisions, and these are all incisions that are approximately the size of an M&M &M candy, very little. And we try and hide those incisions in places that aesthetically they're pleasing at the end, and the only difference between that and laparoscopy, a very big difference, is uh, we're able to do the most complex of cases it doesn't matter how large, uh, how complex, how many surgeries the patient had in the past, uh, how difficult the surgery is, with a high level of expertise, which we have here in this hospital, we're able to do the most complex of cases 
with a robot. The last step of the evolution, which we may or may not have time to talk about today, is a single site robotic surgery. So instead of three or four small uh, incisions over the abdomen, we make one incision over the belly button and the whole surgery is done through that one single incision, which is uh, fantastic. Next step is going to be um, a, an incision comparison between the uh, various type of surgeries. If you look on the very left, uh, top left uh, side, you can see that there is a large incision. That's the bikini incision that we all know. That's the C-section incision that we uh, typically see. And it's a fairly large incision, goes side to side. We're able to enter the abdomen or the pelvis that way and, and complete our uh, big complex GYN surgery. Uh, if you move to the right, you can see that the traditional uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy or laparoscopic GYN surgery the incisions are now smaller, they're multiple, and they're placed in, you know, fairly strategic uh, uh, sites where you can access certain parts of the pelvis. And if you move further to the right, you can see the incisions that we use for this machine, which is the multi-port uh, Da Vinci uh, surgery. You can see they're the same size incisions, but these incisions are placed in a fairly uh, um, uh, strict location to allow us uh, perfect visibility and access. The very far uh, on the right is the single incision uh, robotic surgery, which, uh, through which we're able to put all the instruments. It's a wonderful uh, technology, and we may get to that at the very end. The next step, uh, and I'm not going to bore you with a lot of uh, clinical data here, because I'm sure you want to talk more about the very specific surgeries, and we have very important questions to answer, um, is the adaptation uh, within the U.S., of minimally invasive surgery. An example is benign hysterectomy for benign reasons, non-cancerous, fibroids, bleeding, prolapse, chronic pain, endometriosis. If you look at the red graph, the red graph goes all the, uh, starting from year 2000 on the left, you can see that at that point, a uh, vast majority of cases were done through open uh, incisions, um, and pretty much uh, we did not have robotic surgery back then. Some cases were done vaginally, and some cases were done uh, laparoscopically, but very little. You know, we were very, uh, in the early stages, we didn't really do a lot of complex cases laparoscopically. And as we progressed through time, you can see that in 2005, uh, and I think I was one of the first ones to do these cases, um, we started doing robotic surgeries. And you can see that the graph shows, you know, um, uh, a very high uh, portion of cases done uh, open, and very little, very small number of cases done uh, robotically. There was a major resistance, you know, within the uh, surgical you know, uh, community uh, to adapt to a new technology. Many surgeons did not believe in it. Many surgeons felt that it was just a phase, you know, uh, a fashionable way of doing surgery, and, it's gonna, and it was going to pass. From day one, I believe that this is here to stay. And I was right. This is standard of care today, I believe. If you look at the progression from 2005 forward, you can see that about 2011 and 2012, the graphs intersect, which means the number of cases done robotically was equal to the number of cases done open. And as we progress from 2011, 2012 forward, you can see that more cases are done robotically than open. Thank God. And as you can tell that laparoscopic cases kind of remain stable uh, although on a slight increase, but what is sharp increase is robotic surgery. Well, the next graph here is talking about the benefits of doing robotic surgery. The next picture, you have that picture. Uh, da Vinci surgery, over 3 million procedures are done worldwide, and I think that to date uh, a bit more than 3 million cases. This is a bit uh, uh, old data. The uh, great benefits of this is the High definition, 3D vision, it's a camera that goes in through one of the ports uh, and goes into the uh, patient's abdomen. And as you can tell, that's a 3D camera that has two eyes and, and it's a, just a perfect view. And everything is magnified so large and even the smallest structure within the abdomen or the pelvis looks so large um, and, and cannot miss. And, and that's why it's such a safe technology. Um, a surgeon uh, controls the whole system. I sit at the consult and I'm able to control the camera. Every arm, there are three arms plus the camera, 
I only have two hands, but I'm able to switch very quickly between arms and have complete control of the surgical field. Excuse me. Um, uh, very uh, stable uh, system and very safe. In my opinion, a lot safer than an open procedure. Precision, dexterity of the instruments, I'm able to articulate and turn 360 degrees. I'm able to enter areas that even open, I'd have a hard time, you know, reaching in with my big hands. Uh, with the robot, I'm able to get in because the instruments are tiny. Uh, if you hand me the, uh, that bag for, yeah, one of them. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to open one of these instruments. And if you're able to zoom in on this, you're able to see that these are the instruments that go in. And they pretty much sit this way. And the actual instrument, I'm sorry, the actual instrument goes into the patient's abdomen. And as you can tell, at the very tip of the instrument, we have an articulating uh, either forceps or uh, cautery device or graspers that can turn 360 and grab and, and dissect and cut and burn and do whatever I have to do and suture perfectly well. So it is an incredible, precise uh, system. The robotic arms will mimic the surgeon's hands. I'm able to do whatever I do with my bare hands, only better because I'm more precise. Um, uh, scale down movements. So even big movements with my hands can be scaled down and, and be broken down to very small, precise steps. Um, and tremor filtration. Even surgeons that have a little bit of a tremor operating on, the, uh, on a robot, that tremor uh, actually is eliminated, which is incredible. The next uh, picture, the next slide here, is the single site surgery. And we're not going to talk much about this, but I'd like you to have an idea of what it looks like. You can see that there is one incision over the belly button, uh, approximately maybe two or three centimeters. And as you can tell in the middle uh, cartoon, there is a port, and through that port there's a camera in the middle and two um, uh, robotic arms that actually can articulate and do exactly what we do with a multi-port um, system, which is what we have in back of us. The Da Vinci surgical procedures that we do regularly, and I'm, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff which we'll have questions about, with, and we may be redundant, but I think that that's important information to retain. The Da Vinci robotic procedures that we regularly perform, and we do it really well at this hospital, um, is uh, number one, the most common is fibroid surgery. Uh, women that have fibroid uterus, large fibroids, small fibroids, adenomyosis or any other cause of uh, abnormal uterine bleeding, we're able to do this procedure with a robot, either doing a hysterectomy, removal of the, uh, removal of the uh, whole uterus along with the uh, fibroids or adenomyosis or any other mass that may lead to bleeding. Um, and another option for fertility sparing, for uterine sparing surgery is a myomectomy where we're able to go in and reconstruct the uterus after removal of all the fibroids uh, and thereby preserving the uterus and preserving fertility, women are able to uh, go on and have uh, uh, successful pregnancies in the future. We have a large number of uh, women that come worldwide from all over the country as well um, to uh, uh, utilize our services here. We take pride in doing very large uh, fibroid uterus surgery uh, cases that uh, in many other institutions choose not to do robotically, we developed methods to do even the very large uh, fibroid uterus here robotically, and once again, taking advantage of uh, uh, quick recovery, uh, minimal blood loss, minimal uh, invasive approach, and, and so forth. The uh, next uh, procedure that we do regularly, and we do a lot of it here, is complex endometriosis surgery, which historically can be a very challenging surgery to do open or laparoscopically due to the complexity of the, uh, of the uh, uh, procedure itself due to destruction of anatomy, due to adhesions and, and scar tissue. But we're, we're able to do uh, really good work here with the robot uh, for any level of complexity as far as endometriosis surgery. Uh, and once again, we are able to do resection of endometriosis as well as um, hysterectomy if needed and resection of uh, fallopian tubes. Uh, ovaries and whatnot. 
The last uh, procedure type that uh, I want to talk about very briefly is pelvic organ prolapse, a very common problem, a problem that many women do not talk about much. Uh, many general doctors and general OBGYNs choose not to do uh, that kind of surgeries, which requires expertise. We do a very large number of cases here uh, where there is either um, uterine prolapse, cystocil, which is a prolapse of the bladder, rectocil, which is a prolapse of the posterior portion of the vagina. And what we do uh, with or without the hysterectomy, we are able to suspend the vaginal vault and correct the uh, prolapse and restore anatomy by multiple procedures with and without the utilization of mesh. And that's a whole big uh, other uh, discussion to have later. Uh, patient selection, and I'm going to try and move a little bit faster here, uh, proper robotic surgery. Uh, once again, the conditions, fibroids, endometriosis, prolapse, abnormal bleeding, chronic uh, pain, and obviously GYN malignancies. And this is not limited to prior surgeries. It doesn't matter how many surgeries the patient had in the past. Uh, prior pelvic infections, large, large uteri, small uteri, presence of single multiple adnexal masses, obesity, not a problem. This is the way to go. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop right here because um, the next uh, few slides are going to be clinical evidence and uh, clinical data review. And I think that we're going to go straight to questions and answers. Uh, and they're signaling here to me that we need to uh, move a little faster. So I'll start taking questions uh, specifically about this system. Go right ahead. Okay, so the question was, what is the most common surgical procedures that are done with the uh, aid of robotic surgery? And I just covered uh, uh, that information specifically. The most common uh, surgery that we perform here is hysterectomy, uh, and myomectomy is the second uh, common surgery, along with endometriosis surgery, uh, and last is the prolapse surgery, although a fairly large proportion uh, of prolapse surgeries are done in conjunction with other problems. So hysterectomy is removal of the uterus, myomectomy is removal of fibroids, uh, endometriosis, removal of uh, endometriosis lesions, and prolapse surgery, correction of uterine prolapse. What is the difference between the ventral robotic and laparoscopic? Repeat the question. What is the difference between the ventral robotic versus laparoscopic? Okay, the question is, what is the difference between robotic uh, surgery and laparoscopic surgery. So I did cover that a, a few minutes ago, but I'm going to repeat and I'm going to uh, explain again that both procedures, both modalities require small little tiny incisions. Small little tiny incisions the size of an M&M &M candy, one centimeter. The difference, the, va the major difference is that with robotic surgery, we are able to uh, articulate better. We're able to have better visibility. We're able to do a much more complex case uh, than we do laparoscopically. Laparoscopically, the patient uh, is at the end seeing the same incisions, but the complexity and the uh, level of uh, difficulty that the surgeon can achieve laparoscopically is much lower because the instruments are not as advanced. They're not articulating, they're all straight sticks. Um, so fairly limited with what we can do laparoscopically. Would uterine fibroid surgery considered minimally invasive if it's being if if we're using the Da Vinci surgery? That's a good question. The answer is absolutely. Historically speaking, um, fibroid uterus and uh, myomectomy, removal of fibroids, uh, uh, is known or was known back in the day as a pretty bloody surgery, long recovery. There's a very big blood loss uh, simply because there are large incisions. We are removing large masses from the uterus, from the pelvis, uh, requiring oftentimes you know, blood transfusions and long recovery and painful recovery. Uh, today, when I do all my myomectomies and across the board, I do all my myomectomies uh, robotically, we typically lose a teaspoon of blood, maybe uh, maybe a couple of teaspoons of blood, the whole surgery, uh, and we do any size uterize, uh, and patients go home the next day, oftentimes the same day, uh, with a much quicker return to uh, normal activities. Uh, may, patients can start driving, you know, within a week. Uh, when you do this kind of procedures uh, in an open approach, you're talking about weeks and sometimes months of recovery. How have you 
Okay, so we have we have a, a bit of a noise that kind of makes it difficult. Can you repeat the question? Okay, so the question is how are the advances, the robotic advances, make a difference in the recovery and yeah. and care of the patients? Uh, really wonderful questions, and and uh, I, and I can sit here for an hour and elaborate more on the answer, but I'm going to give you a short answer. If you think about what it means to come in and do a major gynecological procedure and to be able to um, go home within a couple of days and to be able to return to your normal activities and to be able to return to caring for your children and for your family and going back to work soon and be able, being able to be, uh, be mobile and drive and, and walk around and not have to have the help uh, at home for weeks and weeks, you know, if, uh, due to uh, a difficult recovery from an open procedure, the answer is it makes all the difference in the world. I have patients that come in with the fear of, of surgery and thinking that, um, you know, based on what their mom and their grandma told them about a hysterectomy, which they had in the past, and it took, some, it took them months and weeks and weeks to recover, and, and pain following the surgery, uh, they end up doing this robotic surgery, and within a week, they come back and see me in a week or two weeks after surgery, and they come into the office as if they did not have surgery. Um, they're able to mobilize and walk around and, and really resume normal life very quickly. So it makes a huge difference. It changed the way we do things. It made it safer. It made it more possible for women to do it and not be out of uh, uh, their job or caring for their family for weeks and months at a time. And the most important thing, the outcome, in my opinion, is better. When I do my surgeries, I lose very little blood. The, I believe that the adhesions after surgery, the, the complications after surgery is much lower. The rate of infection after surgery is much lower, if not uh, 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 zero. Um, we have a closed abdomen, so we do everything within a closed abdomen. We don't expose the uh, internal organs and the internal vis viscera to the outside. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. And I believe that moving forward pretty soon, uh, as everybody catches up and more surgeons train and believe in the technology, this is going to be the way to do most procedures, if not all of them. Are we good? Well, I believe that the time is up, and uh, this was um, uh, this was the most fun uh, Facebook Live uh, for me, uh, and I gave a f uh, quite a few of them up until now, uh, simply because I love this room, I love doing what I do, and uh, at this hospital at Pascac, we do uh, we do the most complex of cases. As you can tell, we do have the most advanced uh, robotic surgical system, the Da Vinci XI. Um, and I'm glad that you could you could have a you know a uh, look inside the OR and spoke to the person or hear from the person who does most of the procedures at this hospital. I wish you all the best of luck and great health. And if there are any questions, you are able to reach me through the contact on the Facebook uh, live uh, uh, page. Uh, my name is Itzhak Asulin. Stay well, stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you.